So hi, I'm Rika Jean-Francois and I'm the Commissioner for Corporate Social Responsibility at ITB Berlin. ITB is, takes the corporate social responsibility and the social responsibility very seriously and that's why we organize a lot of seminars at the ITB convention dealing with sustainable tourism as well. So um, this year, as part of the CSR Day in Tourism, we will also talk about water shortage. So this is why I'm very happy to welcome you, Stroma. Dr. Stroma Cole is the senior lecturer of the International Tourism Development Department of Geography and Environmental Management at the University of the West of England, Bristol. And I'm very happy to have you here today and to ask you some questions. Well, I'm very pleased to be with you. Good. So let's go right into the questions. The first question is, how important is water as a resource? And do we already observe water conflicts at the moment? Um, water is a fundamental resource. It's fundamental to life. Um, it's fundamental to many people's livelihoods as well as um, their individual lives. And it's also essential for the health and happiness of tourists. Tourists don't go to places where they can't drink water, wash their faces um, and have a shower at the very basic, but also they like to enjoy nice environments that have been watered and um, use swimming pools and spas, etc, etc. Um, and yes, we are all already observing conflicts. Um, and those conflicts take um, a variety of different forms in different countries, but conflicts are reported in Bali, in Zanzibar, in Goa, and the Gambia, um, as well as protests in many other places around the world. So that means that there are already um, problems with water shortage which are causal to tourism. Yes, absolutely. It's where you get high density tourism, which is beyond the carrying capacity of the water supply system and where the hotels get um, priority provision over the local communities, which is obviously um, detrimental and upsetting, annoying, frustrating and angry making for local people when they can see tourists that have um, thousands of litres per day per tourist when they can't even get a bucket full. So that means there are already impacts also on the traditional way of life for, for the local people. Um, yes, we're seeing in a lot of places where they're having to give up agriculture um, because they don't have the water that's required. Um, in Bali that means also that the cultural landscape which tourists love to go and see um, is also um, in decline because of water shortage problems. Okay, so um, so we already heard that there are plenty of problems, I mean, and also impacts on the local communities. So are there any best practices? I mean, what can we do? How can we do it in a sustainable way so that um, the communities um, don't feel that negative impact? Well, there's, there's a lot that hotels, um, particularly bigger hotels, are already doing in terms of technical approaches to reduce their water demand. And while what everything that anybody does is um, very helpful, the, the technical, technological problems alone are not going to solve the problems whether in, in the areas where the water shortages are most stark. Um, many of the smaller players are unaware of the water issues or the seriousness of the water issues and or they cannot afford the technologies which the larger hotels can employ. Um, things like timing devices for gardens or aerated shower heads. It's all very well if you're um, a major corporate, you can afford to employ these things, but the small scale places are quite unable to um, employ those methodologies. And at the moment, there's um, a lack of help of the bigger players towards the smaller players in terms of employing um, some of those techniques. But um, beyond that, um, there is a need for hotels to 
um, help fulfill the locals right to water. Um, now while it's the government's duty to ensure that um, there, the human right to water, it's the business's right to ensure that they respect that. And um, while some hotels have been very helpful in providing water supplies to the local community, you have to consider very carefully whether that is um, integrated within the wider community perspective and also the government's objectives. Because what happens when that hotel goes bankrupt? If they're supplying a particular village and then they go bankrupt, what happens to the villagers' supply? Furthermore, what happens if they say they're going to supply a village but then the dry season is particularly long or there's a drought situation and they need the water? Do they get it to the detriment of the communities? We've seen examples of both of those things um, going on. So while providing water and sanitation to communities is very helpful, it's got to be done whilst looking at the, the wider perspective of things. If all tourism businesses were to adopt a human rights approach and were to ensure that they weren't compl complicit in the abuse of the human right to water, that would go a very long way towards helping to solve these problems. It's international law, it's been endorsed by the UN, businesses need to step up to the plate and start respecting um, and using their business power to um, help overcome these problems. So I understand we really need a public-private, uh, we have to work together and Absolutely. we also need... Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. Um, it needs um, stakeholders to come together to um, work together on it because as we know in very many tourism destinations there is a huge governance gap for a whole variety of reasons and these governments where in, in destinations where local people don't have a supply of water to their houses where they're walking long distances waiting long hours to get a small bucket full of water when the tourists can have thousands of litres while it should be the government that's doing something we know that those governments are not doing something there is a governance gap and that's why Ruggie said it so we could, from the tourism, sorry, we from the tourism industry could also, I mean, um, give some pressure. I mean, also on the on the local governments that Ab absolutely has to be changed. Absolutely. And yeah, Ab absolutely. And um, we also talked about the women who really they uh, collect the water, they bring the water, they provide the water. So they should be empowered as well. And then I think this is part of the program, isn't it? Absolutely. Um, women are always the hardest hit whenever there's water scarcity. Generally speaking, it's women whose role it is to collect water. It's women's role to cook um, for which they need water. It's women who end up looking after children who get sick because of drinking dirty water. It's women who um, are responsible for doing the washing and uh, finding enough water to look after the household. So it's always women who are hardest hit by water scarcity problems and it's very frequently women who have the least voice to um, make complaints about the problems that they face. Well, I think that's, uh, that's a very important thing that we have to understand, we from the tourism industry, that we can really help to uh, implement the right to water which is a human right. Absolutely. And, uh, Absolutely. There's an awful lot of things that hotels can do um, along the way, um, conducting their due diligence to find out how far they're impacting on the local communities, being accountable for their actions and putting remedial processes in place to support local people, taking an active role Tourism players are powerful players in tourism destinations. They can make up for the government's gap. They can educate tourists. A lot of the research shows that tourists in these places are ignorant of the water shortage problem because they're surrounded by water in their hotels. They're surrounded by green. 
they're surrounded by swimming pools why would they consider that there's a water shortage how would they know about it if it's not the role of the tourism industry to tell them about it yeah. as i say the um, bigger players can do capacity building and technology transfer for the smaller players in tourism um, destinations they can act as mentors and if they do embrace the human rights approach then it will safeguard their reputation, it can enhance their reputation, it can protect their brand image, it can pr improve their customer and employee loyalty, um, which can only be good for their profits, um, reducing staff turnover, etc., etc. There's very many ex benefits that will run to the tourism companies, to the hotels, if they embrace a human rights approach. Yeah, I think this is a very good message and thank you very much and I appreciate that. And I think, um, yeah, everybody should come and, and, and join uh, your lecture at ITB uh, Berlin, CSRD, the ITB convention, so that we can learn more about it and really see how there can be a task force developed that would be Absolutely. next step then, yeah. Good. Uh, absolutely. Um, I look forward very much to being there and to um, celebrating together with um, ITB um, 10 years of um, running the Travel Mart in Berlin. I'm excited to be there and look forward to it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, so we're looking forward well. to have you there. Thank, thank you. you very much indeed. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.